Today I'm going to share three powerful methods that you can use to find hope, meaning, and purpose in your life, no matter how dark things might seem right now. Because, as Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. But let's face it, from time to time in our modern world, it can feel a little bit challenging to find that why. These days, more than ever, with our increased feelings of isolation, anxiety, and depression, our shrinking attention spans, our addictions to social media and our cell phones, a lot of people spend most of their time and energy at trying to distract themselves from reality, trying to deal with that feeling of purposelessness. But hey, no matter how bad that might sound, don't worry because there is good news. No matter how hard things might be from time to time, the meaning is always out there. These ideas are based on on the work of the amazing Viktor Frankl, a pretty remarkable guy, and are expressed in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. In 1942, Frankl, his wife, his brother, his mother, and his father were all imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp in what is now the Czech Republic. He spent the next three years of his life split between four different concentration camps dealing with starvation, death, disease, hard labor. By the time he was liberated by Allied forces in 1945, Frankl was the only surviving member of his family. Now that's some really heavy stuff, but to me it adds so much emphasis and it really underscores the power behind his theories on how to find meaning in life no matter the circumstances. And these three methods that we can all use to find meaning in our own lives are born out from his experience dealing both with suicide prevention and in experiencing the horrors of Nazi Germany concentration camps. So let's dive in. The first method we're going to talk about is what Frankl called the creative value. He believed that people could discover a sense of meaning by pouring themselves into the act of creating something. Thing. He recalls a story, he was sick, feverish, delirious, and in order to keep himself lucid, he was scribbling on pieces of paper bits and pieces of the books he wanted to write once he was free from the concentration camp. That gave him a reason to carry on, to endure. Some of the information he scribbled on those pieces of paper is what we're talking about in this video. Personally, I feel like there's a huge amount of value to this principle. I, I know in my own experience, whenever I felt down or just not motivated or my own lack of meaning or purpose, going out and creating something, making something and sharing it with the world has always been a way for me to reconnect with what makes me feel excited and alive. This principle of finding meaning through creativity expands far beyond the concept of just art because you can also pursue meaning by creating the person that you want to be. You create yourself through your actions and your decisions. I believe deep down a lot of us have a secret voice that tells us to go follow our dreams, to start a business, to go back to school, to go travel the world, something. We allow things like our fear, our doubt, and our insecurities, and just our comfort zone to keep us firmly rooted where we currently are. We'll say, oh, I'll not do it next week. I'll start next year. Or, you know, I know I hate the job, but the pay is pretty good. And that little voice that's telling us we need to change or grow or try something new, that might be that sense of meaning that we're looking for in life but we just don't listen to it because we don't think it's possible or we're afraid to try or we think it's not practical or realistic. But oftentimes even pursuing that creation or pursuing that goal of becoming a better version of yourself leads you to experiences which in and of themselves provide new senses of meaning to your life. And that brings us to the second method that Frankel believes we can all use to find a sense of meaning and purpose in our own lives. That is through experiencing life with a sense of openness, which Frankel calls experiential values. You see, our guy Victor believed that in life, the experiences we have have the potential to provide us with profound levels of meaning if we are open to them. To me, this just means appreciating life, taking the time to live in the moment, to take a deep breath, to be grateful, and take the world in. So much of our modern existence is digital to the point where it's easy to forget that we are actually living creatures on this floating space rock, and yet we have this amazing capacity for love and connection and creativity and greatness. When you actually think about it for a second, the fact that we're alive in the first place is completely freaking insane. It's so easy to get caught up in our own heads and forget about the moment. All of a sudden we stop paying attention to the beautiful hike we're on and we're upset that we don't have internet connection to post the selfie we just took of ourselves on that hike and we can't see those sweet, sweet likes roll in. But we all know deep down that although those likes might feel good for a second, they don't really help in the long run. They don't really mean anything. They do help the YouTube algorithm though, so 
drop a like. But the more we allow ourselves to be open, present, and in the moment in life, the more we start to connect with the people around us. We start to take things in and experience those new levels of meaning and purpose that we might not have noticed before. And you might say, well, that sounds great, but I don't get to control the experiences that I have in life. And that is true. We don't always get to choose what we experience in life, but we always get to choose how we experience it. This is my personal favorite of Frankl's concept, the third and I believe the most powerful and transformative method to find meaning in life, what Frankl called attitudinal values. What a word. This is perhaps the core idea of Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, that even in absolute suffering, you retain the ability to choose what your suffering means and use that meaning to transcend the suffering itself. And at first that sounds a little corny. When life hands you a terrible situation that you can't change, you're just supposed to, what, change your point of view? And that's supposed to fix everything, really? But speaking from my own experience, even though it's a simple idea, it has truly transformative power. One of the most painful experiences I've had in my own life was the breakup with a girl I really liked. And at first I was pretty devastated. This whole potential future I had written only in my own head just suddenly disintegrated overnight and it's like I didn't know who I was anymore. But even though that experience put me through a tremendous amount of suffering, I found meaning in that suffering and that meaning changed everything. There's this saying, things happen for you, not to you. And at least in this case, I now absolutely believe, despite the fact that it was super painful, that this experience happened for me. As a direct result of all that suffering, I realized so much about myself. I realized that I had to push through all these fears and anxieties that had been holding me back. I realized that I wanted to make things, I wanted to travel the world, I wanted to be a better version of myself. I would never have read this book or made this video if I had not gone through that experience. Viktor Frankl quotes a man as saying, I broke my neck, but my neck did not break me. And you can see this all over the world. There's people with partial paralysis who have climbed mountains, people who doctors said would never walk again, who have won races, and people in concentration camps who were able to find meaning and dignity in the most hellish of circumstances known to man. They were able to find a reason to carry on despite everything by choosing their attitude and response to situations that life handed them that they could not change. And just to be clear, Frankl by no means says that suffering is required to find meaning. He simply says that suffering can lead to a new source of meaning. He actually believes that suffering without a good reason is pretty stupid. But he also attests that even in those darkest of moments, people are capable of finding a meaning for their suffering. A way to grow stronger, a way to learn, a way to help others through your experience. Life is full of meaning, but only you can find it. Because the meaning is in how we choose to interpret things. It's in what we choose to create, who we choose to be, what we choose to do with our lives. So there you have it. Three different ways for you to find meaning and purpose in your own life. Through creativity, through experiencing life, and through your attitude. Both towards the things you experience in life, being open, but also towards those things you cannot change. So find something that you believe in and commit to it. Maybe it's your family, maybe it's experiencing the world and connecting with people, or maybe it's starting your own business that will change the world. It might be hard and it might be scary and it will definitely challenge you, but it's worth it. Because by doing that, Frankel believes, and I'm inclined to agree with him, you will find your meaning. There you have it. Drop a like, leave a comment. Let me know if you've also struggled with finding meaning in your life. If you're curious about the book, I will put a link in the description. And if you're still feeling a little lackluster, a little lack of meaning, then check out this video next where I show you how to find more good things in your life instantaneously without really having to change anything except your perspective. So check that out. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.